Det är en kassmuseum. So imagine you're Rembrandt's uh, students. First thing I do is charge you 100 guilders a year, which is the immense, uh, immense sum of 200 guilders. It's approximately a year's income of a worker, carpenter, or baker. So paying 100 guilders that was the very expensive master uh, study was Rembrandt's, right? Now you just Google and you get the information or you listen to me. Uh, now, making paint is part of that apprenticeship, and what you need is basically anything that is colorful that you can mix with the binder, glue it on your canvas, and you have a painting. And the binder in Rembrandt's case is oil. Uh, he uses oil paint. Um, maybe you know these seeds. This is linseed. Come with them roosty in the morning. And you press that, then you have linseed oil. Actually, you can use any oil. Uh, 
only not oil like oil that bone never dry all the other oils are fine linted or really dies very quickly and it's cheap and it was cheap in the 17th century Deborah's our first first choice to make paint and then you go look for a uh, colorful uh, substances and when you live in France and you go to the Roussillon you have yellow mountains and you just grab yellow stones you break them down to powder that's a nice pigment for a paint um and it's in in Holland they grew plants the meta plant and those roots are red and if you grind them down to powder it's a sort of muddy well not way right red but the moment you add oil to it, it becomes a blood like beautiful dark red so plants is a good idea and then you have animals you all know this story the christian near insects that live on cactuses in in the 17th century only on cactuses in mexico so you measure yeah well, well not easy to get this color you have those insects millions of them you grate them down to powder this you do it in water and you can um you can dry clothes with this then if you dilute this in water and you add chalk powder to it, white powder, then the chalk absorbs the dark color and transforms itself into this beautiful carmine, right? And this has a number, E120, you all tasted it the moment you eat a red M&Ms or you have lipstick or those very colorful uh, strawberry yogurts. Now, for the black, that's easy. If you need really black, real black, you go to the butchers, you fetch some animal bones, you burn them without oxygen, and they carbonize to something really dark. You grind it down to powder. You have dark black. You can do the same with wort that gives you chocolate, but that's more gray. And you can go to Germany and just fetch a bit of coal in the mines, right? And you grind this down to powder, you, you get dark brown color. And remember, I use this very often for the underpainting because Dark coals make the linty door dry very quickly. And so it's a good good start in the beginning of a painting. The same is true for glass. Glass makes, a powdered glass makes oil dry very quickly. And you have blue glass. There's a lot of cobalt in it. And then you have blue glass. You grind it down to powder. You have a beautiful blue color. But we find a lot of cobalt in Rembrandt's paintings. But not a lot of blue. That is because this cobalt blue operate about 200 years fades out and turns into something brownish. So a lot of research going, what was the original color? Was it more bluish or maybe beige? Because there's a lot of cobalt in it. Now, uh, once you've got your pigments, then you, as a student, you go sit here. Remember and go like deep, maybe some ogre. Yeah, sure, no. No problem. Here we go. I take some of my pigments. And I put a certain amount of oil with it, like so. And first I mix this with the palette knife. And now, you see me doing this approximately. Yes, I do this approximately. You can always add a bit of oil to it. You can always add a bit of pigment to it. Every pigment needs another amount of oil. Those uh, mineral colors absorb much more oil than metal colors, for example. But the more you prepare paint, the more you know your pigments and your closer you are, is it the quicker this process it will be? Now, this is not paint yet. I'm looking for something that is shiny, quite beautiful, oil paint shiny, and the substance of a toothpaste. Is like something. Now, what do you do here? Is, this is called grinding the paint. And that what I try to do here is uh, to surround, surround every tiny particle completely with oil. Because oil has this nasty mm. habit of retracting itself if that is not completely closed, right? And that happens very slowly. Your painting is already sold on the wall of the, uh, of the buyer, and then oil goes through to proof, and then it leaks out. We say that, we, we, we call that sagging out of our painting. So if paint is not prepared, oil hangs not prepared correctly, you can have an accident like that and to avoid it well your master will probably make you turn a long time to be sure that there's not one grain not completely surrounded with oil now would you like to try it go go give it a try <laughs> Thank you.
Аз такова концепция. Това беше свързано с това, че не всички като, като му чуят и ми това да справяш човека, той да държа като давател. Ага. И вика, ти ще се сеща да като дължа. Uh, this museum, I normally give art lessons here, drawing, painting, etching, things like that. Every now and then they ask me also how, uh, to demonstrate to the public how Rembrandt made his etchings and today is one of these days. So we are going to do that. Before I start, uh, I know that he's famous as a painter. But in the 17th century, Rembrandt was not only a painter, he was also an etcher, a printmaker. And as far as I know, at that time, probably, he was much more famous as a, a printmaker than a painter. How he made his uh, prints? He got a copper plate, he covered it with a mixture of these three ingredients, tar, uh, bee wax, and resin. He mixed them together, and he warms up the plate, and he puts a very thin layer on it. Once the plate is covered, like this, he goes with a sharp pen and starts drawing on it. Uh, once you touch with the sharp pen on that wax, the wax falls off. It's very thin film and copper gets exposed. So when you draw something here, actually you're peeling off the wax and you're exposing copper from it. Once your drawing is there, he surrounds it with walls of wax like that, like this, and he adds acid on it. The acid will bite any exposed copper. So it will bite actually your drawing in the plate itself. The longer you leave the acid, the deeper it goes. Okay. And stop, George. Let's see what George did. The moment of truth, George. The scenery is a dog, a sleeping dog. Door, I <laughs> 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 